If I said the words to you, Hong Kong, what does it make you think of? Well, today we're going to be exploring this magical part of the world and finding out just why it's such a hub of cruising activity. Well, hello and welcome to Planet Cruise Weekly, episode 30, the big 3 -0. Big 3 -0. And Glenn's back for the big 3 -0. I am. I'm Incredible. Back. You're back for the big the big celebratory. Yes. The big ce and, you've, and you're celebrating yourself because yeah, you... just got back from the wedding. I know. Congratulations. I, know. I, know. I, know. I think good. we should hug, but I'm not sure it's appropriate on camera. Well, it's good now because I've paid for my wedding and done and dusted. Now he's planning his. So I can watch his money start to drain away. <laughs> so you're laughing on the other side. Yeah, yeah you yeah. wait, mate. You wait. Now, um, today we're talking about Hong Kong. Why are we talking about Hong Kong? Well, we're talking about Hong Kong because it's such a great place to go. And, it is. And, and you know, it's one of these places that if you are doing a, an itinerary in Southeast Asia, yeah. you're more than likely going to have it on the list of countries you're going. And if it's not on that list, then it really, really should be because there's so much to do. You've got Chinese tradition, you've got the kind of, uh, the kind of colonial roots, and you've also got this kind of sparkling island metropolis with so much to see and do. And that's why you often find it at the beginning and the end of most of the itineraries that we do in this area. We do tend to do that. A lot of our cruises, say you fly and have a couple of days there or do it at the end of the cruise. People are always not sure exactly where it is. It's on the southeast coast of China. Hong Kong literally means fragrant harbor. And in fact, Hong Kong is the foremost deep water harbor uh, in Asia and in fact this you'll find evidence of many ships from around the world mixing with obviously the ancient Chinese junks that they have there as well and like I said it's a beautiful huge harbour and it's fringed by a glistening forest of steel glass skyscrapers and it's overlooked by the dragon crested hills of Kowloon. In fact sailing in and sailing out is, is a magical experience so if you don't arrive or leave by cruise ship and you are flying in um, or flying out do make sure you do a harbour cruise at the very very least. Now there's almost 5,000 years of Chinese history in Hong Kong and around about 150 50 years of colonial influence as well. So it does have this, this kind of fascinating mishmash of culture. Now there's about 7 million uh, in the population uh, as of 2013 at the last major census. 97% are Chinese but they speak Cantonese and English and this is important because it does mean um, that English is spoken by virtually everyone and makes it very accessible, particularly within Southeast Asia. Now there are four main parts aren't there set to Hong Kong? There are. You've got the Kowloon Peninsula, You've got the New Territories and the Outline Islands, as well as Hong Kong Island itself. The Prosperous Island is the centre of the economy, politics, entertainment and shopping, and is known as the Concrete Jungle, although its southern part is noted for the seashores and bays. Now Kowloon is another flourishing part and it's here you're going to find places uh, like the Ladies Market which is really famous, you've got the Temple Night Market, another great icon. You've also got the upscale shops that you find on, on Nathan's Road which is called the Golden Mile. There's also several museums and there's the tourist friendly Sim Sha Su area. That's forgive my I know, I was going to say <laughs> forgive, my, forgive my pronunciation. Uh, the new territories again connect Kowloon to the mainland China along with the outlying islands and an ideal place to experience a peaceful and natural holiday amongst the elaborate temples and woodlands. Now I can't emphasise this enough, the biggest mistake people make with Hong Kong is that they literally get off the ship, they go into the, one of the big shopping malls that sit by the terminal and they just explore the main island city, do a bit of shopping, come back and they think they've visited Hong Kong. That's what I did. But you know, people do, you just do the, the main bit of the city but it's really important that you actually get out of that because over 70% of Hong Kong is actually mountains, it, it, you know, sprawling country parks, beautiful historical and geological gems and if you escape those city limits um, you get a chance to maybe go for a Song Dynasty village, maybe hike a deserted island, kayak amongst these incredible volcanic rocks and beautiful crystal waters. It's an amazing place, but often people but, don't. But this is the problem with it. most destinations, Keith, because most mm. people just they don't bother researching it, so they just arrive in a destination, get off and do what everybody else, and just True. follow everyone like sheep. And what we're going to do is give you a list in no particular order of what we think are some of the best things to do in Hong Kong. That said, if you want even more detail, click the link above now and it will take you through to some, some great written material that our expert destination planners have been putting together for you. Now, I have just said they're in no particular order, Glenn. However, I think we both agree that this first one is probably our favourite. So the Harbour Lights show um, is one of the top things that you have to do in Hong Kong. And then the Harbour Lights happens every night about 8 o'clock in the evening. Only lasts about 15 minutes, but it's on over 40 different buildings. And you can experience it, obviously, from the quayside if you wanted to. And that's where we get the free of charge. But we do do one that does the Harbour Lights show, which is called the Symphony of Lights. And that's the boat trip. Sit there in prime location, no one in front of you, and actually watch the lights. And, and does make a difference. It does, does 
does because, it does, you, you because know. otherwise you, you see the whole thing in perspective as it was meant to be. When, when we were the standing the there before, it does get really, really busy, so you're sort of having a look at them. Mm. And the good thing with this is a lot of our tailor-made packages that when we do Hong Kong, they include that Symphony of Lights tour. So when you're booking it, if it's not included, ask the team to put it in. Mm, it's amazing. Now, second thing, um, and again, this is no particular order, but you know me and food, uh, try the cuisine. Okay, it, it's incredible. It's one of the world's great eating capitals, and there's loads of different cultures that, of course, made Hong Kong what it is, and this really also has its effect on the culinary traditions. It's a paradise for foodies. So you've got luxury restaurants, you've got street street food stalls, uh, you can try things like yum cha, which is uh, literally tea and dim sum. Or you can go for simple things like wonton noodles. Um, you know, you can get beautiful seafood, because again, a lot of it's caught in the harbour, and you've got these lovely little restaurants that do that. A little fact I love about this is you can eat out three times a day for 13 years and never eat at the same place twice. Really? Yeah, it's quite incredible. Trust me, I've tried. The next thing we're gonna talk about is shopping. Okay, and my best advice on this, because I tried to do it and lost, is don't fight it. I'm not a massive shopper. I'm a typical man in the sense that I just like to kind of be in and out, you know, before anyone's noticed, like the SAS, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Right, I, I, okay. I, I, don't, I don't like to spend long on it. And um, yeah, Hong Kong, though, is a shopper's paradise. And, and there's literally so much. First of all, the, the, there's no sales tax on the island, which means prices are kept very low and competitive. Um, also, there's an endless array of different types of shops. So you've got these really glitzy malls. You've got these beautiful, dinky vintage dens. You've got loads of street markets. You've got so much. And they sell everything from ancient porcelain through to the latest consumer electronics through to handmade tailor suits. And I was one of those people that went and got a suit made for me while I was there. Oh really, did you? Yeah, yeah. I did. And, and the money you were earning is a Christmas. <laughs> now the local currency is the Hong Kong dollar. People always say, can we use other currencies? I would say the Hong Kong dollar is the one that you need to have, especially even if you're paying for small things on market stalls, they will take the local currency only. The other thing as well, of course, you can use your credit card. So if you're going into any of the big department stores, use the credit card for your own security as well. But again, you can purchase anything on that. Now, both cruise terminals have huge shopping, shopping centers mm, attached. Huge. And they are so good that some of the uh, passengers and the crew never even venture beyond the actual cruise terminal as well. But again, if you can, try and get as far afield as you can and see what's on offer. Yeah, now, the main thing about shopping uh, from our point of view and our advice to you is to go and experience the markets. So the, the big ones that I mentioned is Stanley Market. It's one of the world's greatest bazaars. It's really well known. You've got a dizzying array of different stalls and shops that sell anything from handcrafted souvenirs, which are jewelry and fashion and cameras and toys, all at very reasonable prices. Then there's Glenn's favourite, which is the ladies' market. Why have I got to talk about ladies' market? Oh, because, well, you're the expert. Lovely, okay. So you've got ladies' market there, over 100 stalls of bargain clothing, accessories and souvenirs. The ladies' market on Tung Choi Street, uh, uh, provides a one kilometre stretch uh, on which you can practice your haggling skills. Then the other big one is the Temple Street Night Market. And this, of course, is, is at night when the sun goes down, they've already set up. The great thing about this is you've got a really good spread of merchandise that you can buy from trinkets and teaware, souvenirs to electronics and watches. But you've also got loads of street entertainment. So you get opera singers coming out, you get fortune tellers, you get jugglers and acrobats. It's really, really incredible. Next up, we're going to talk about the view. Now, everyone likes a panoramic view. They do. They do. And, and Hong Kong is one of the best. You need to go up to a place called Victoria Peak for it. Um, and it's, it's probably the highest and most photographed and iconic landmark in Hong Kong. It's about 1,805 meters above sea level. From the top, you can see everything. Victoria Harbor, you can see all the way across the, to the Green Hills of the New Territories, all the surrounding islands. And you access it by one of the world's oldest funicular railways, which is really incredible, called the Peak Tram. And it takes you right up. So just the journey getting there is great. And then the view when you've got there, just, blows you away. And you can see the British influence being called Victoria Peak, Victoria Harbour, obviously with the British influence in there as well. Now the other thing to do, is, we mentioned it before, is getting out on the water. Now a popular way of doing this is by taking the Star Ferry. This is between Kowloon Peninsula and Hong Kong Island. The, the route provides really great viewpoints of the city, famous skyline with all the skyscrapers definitely get out on the water in Hong Kong. Mm. Okay, now if you're in Hong Kong with your family, then this is one you do want to take note of, Ocean Park, um, which is incredible. And it's a, it's a kind of unique theme park, which does an awful lot. It's an amusement park, it's also a marine life park, it's a zoo and an oceanarium. A great way of, of taking the family out or just going if you're interested in that yourself and, and learning but also having a fantastic time. Okay also from September to July I, I do like a bit of a flatter I must admit. You can go to one of uh, Hong Kong's famous racehorse uh, tracks and one of their meets. It's a culturally authentic experience you'll be sur surrounded by the locals. The good thing as well it's right in the centre as well so you've actually got the skyscrapers encircling the, uh, the track 
as well to be in the centre of Hong Kong with all these skyscrapers and the horses running around and hopefully you might even get yourself a winner. Okay now we can't really talk about Hong Kong without talking about Lantau Island. Um, it's the largest of Hong Kong's islands and it sits at what we call the mouth of the Pearl River. Uh, it's got a really beautiful mountainous interior which the best way to explore it is going on something called the Nagong Ping 360 cable car which is a recent addition and you can choose two different types of cabins. You've got the regular cabin with a normal floor or you can get the crystal cabin which has a crystal floor or a glass floor so you can look down uh, from a massive height so if you don't have a good head for heights it's probably not the best choice for you but it's a great way of really seeing a much more rural um, experience of Hong Kong really seeing the local countryside remember over 70% of Hong Kong is countryside but it's where it takes you that's really exciting yeah it takes you to the Tian Tan Buddha and this is the world's largest outdoor Buddha sits at 34 meters tall on the hill uh, and it's reached by a long stairway so make sure you've got good shoes on there to get up there and also it's well worth a visit to the next door is the Poling Monastery as well a beautiful traditional Buddhist monastery hidden away amongst the lush and peaceful mountain settings so definitely worth a visit there but as I said go prepared take rucksacks plenty of good clothing with you and make sure you've got your trainers on mm. now another great temple while we're talking about them is the Man Mo Temple uh, and this is halfway up the Victoria Peak and in fact it's the most oldest and most famous of Hong Kong's temples. It's dedicated to the god of literature, Man, and the god of war, Mo. Uh, and it's a great way to escape the hustle and bustle of the city and get your, your healthy dose of Southeast Asian incense and meditation. Another thing to do is go to a place called Repulse Bay. Now, that some repulses people, me, Glenn. Yeah, exactly. People say, why do you want to go there? But it's another good way of getting away from the hustle and bustle of the city centre and to catch up with those rays, bit of sunlight and hit the beach as well. It's a great destination in the southern part of the main island and it's fast becoming the new go-to beachside destination for Hong Kong. Now the other thing again, and I will keep on going on about it, but please, please, please don't just go to the city and think that's Hong Kong, get out into the countryside. Uh, and there you can walk literally for hours in national parks, you can go along these well-marked trails, you cannot see a soul, or on the other hand, you can walk over hills and through forests and past reservoirs and deserted villages and see a whole host of really interesting wildlife. So don't just think it's shopping, don't just think it's skyscrapers, it's a lot, lot more than just that. Okay, so some general tips when you are going to Hong Kong. First one really is to do with the travel and also just generally getting around because they have something called the Octopus Card. So if you're familiar with the Oyster Card in London, it's similar, but it gives you even more ability. Um, it's a rechargeable, contactless smart card. Um, you can use it on most forms of transport. So you've got the minibuses, the ferries, even the peak tram, the, the trains. But you can also use it in convenience stores such as 7-Elevens, so supermarkets, fast foods, restaurants, Starbucks, uh, supermarkets, pretty much you name it, you, you can use it and it saves you on average between 5 to 10% That's good, isn't it? On, on what it would normally. And it kind of works like the Oyster Card in the same sense you can purchase it from convenience stores. It has normally a really kind of iconic image on it from Hong Kong such as Victoria Peak or you know or the harbour all lit up. So it's a really nice thing that you can keep as a souvenir afterwards or keep hold of it and then take it back and recharge it and reuse it the next time you go back to Hong Kong. That's good. People always ask about the weather. They're never sure about the weather conditions over in this part of the world. And again, it mirrors the UK. So July being hot, uh, the best month, and obviously January being traditionally the coldest. We say uh, that, but then the UK weather pattern's completely gone, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, that's true. <laughs> um, and people sort of, sort, of, sort of used to say to me on tour, what do I need to take with me? Just go prepared. Weather can be very, very changeable as it is in the UK. I always say take a rucksack, layers of clothing as well, good footwear, depending on where you're going. And the main thing as well is also take an umbrella because you do, it is known for downpour in Hong Kong so you don't want to be caught out on that one. Also getting out there as well as I said many of our packages are dealing with Hong Kong now and you've got Cathay Pacific going in direct from Manchester and into London that's obviously their national airline. Again if you've got regional airports Newcastle, Glasgow, Birmingham we can look at other airlines that will go indirect into Hong Kong as well. So it's really, really simple going out there. And as I said, we can build the package for you, whether you have two, three, four days. We've told you about Hong Kong, look what there's to do. Don't mm -hmm. just limit yourself to one night free stay. So get there and see as much as you can. Yeah, you do need three or four days. So if you want to find out a little bit more about that and see some of the deals that we've currently got that include Hong Kong as a destination, either as a stopover, you know, or as one of, one of the ports in an itinerary, then just click the link there and it will put you through some of our dedicated cruise experts, such as Glenn. Now, what we need to do is say thank you to a few people who've been getting in touch, but actually, before we do that, if people do want to get in touch, Glenn, 
how do they do it? They can do it a number of different ways. So they can use Facebook, they can use Twitter, they can also contact us at hello at planetcruise.co.uk or of course just check out the website as well. You've got all the cruises on there and as I said we sell cruises around the world, one day is up to world cruises. Now a uh, big thank you to the people that have been in contact recently. We're just going to share a couple of those with you. Others will be here all day. So uh, Catherine Ryan said fantastic episode last week. Uh, that was about our cruising from the UK. Great insight into all the ports. Best of all explaining how to get their big smiley face emoji. Thank you very much, Catherine. Really appreciate your feedback. And then finally, Juliet Davis. She said, we loved our time in Hong Kong. Uh, well, so did we, Juliet. So we hope you've enjoyed us maybe bringing back a few memories on today's episode. You know, we could have been here for hours and hours and hours, but we hope we've done justice by just kind of scraping the surface of what there is to do there. And of course, you know, this, is, this show is driven by you guys. So if there's things that you want us to feature on there or go into a bit more depth about or not sure about stuff, we will try. Obviously, we can't cater for everything, but we will do our very best and try and give as much information as we can. Yeah, thanks very much for watching and we'll uh, see you next week. Cheers guys.